This is the all new generation of the Toyota Yaris and here on Autogefühl we have it for you in exterior, interior and the driving experience what has changed? The pros and the cons as usual here join me Thomas in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! The most remarkable thing about the Toyota Yaris is, it's a car for everyone, not just for an exclusive target group, yet it is screaming out in the design, so a very unique design, definitely. Look at these very strong accentuations here in the hood, then wide opening here for the front grille, so even stronger in this generation. Also dimension-wise, 4 centimeters flatter, 5 centimeters wider, so about 2 inches each. So a stronger stance on the road and definitely a very unique design. Daytime running light here in LED, a new signature and also the main headlamp unit can also be bought with LED, depends then on the trim level. And also LED fog lamps are also an optional in this LED package. So a little bit more technology on the inside definitely as well, soon more to that. The question is your first impression. Do you like it or not? Leave it in the comments. 3 meters 94, 12 foot 9 or 155 inches is the length of this new Toyota Yaris. So the length is more or less the same, whereas the wheelbase has been increased. Supposed to have an effect on the rear seating there. We'll soon find out more about that. Also, we will check on while driving how they changed the suspension setting because they told us that they made the suspension more comfortable. Yet at the same time, the car is supposed to be a little bit sportier because it is 37% stiffer from the chassis. And we'll see in the driving part how that plays an effect. Then wheels start with 15 inch steel, then 16 inch aluminum and these are the optional 17 inch aluminum wheels which have the you know the biggest and most massive or sportiest style. This is also the hybrid, soon more about the engines and you can see this contrasting paint top to the lower part. This top part here is definitely real paint, I specifically asked for that, although you can feel and see the transition here. But again, it's still real paint. What is not real paint is very interesting here on the inside when you open the door. This is like a st sticker right here, a black one. And this is covering the red paint because when you close the door, you might have a red stripe that would shine through the gap here. So yeah, interesting that they thought about that. And also very remarkable that when you look at the top of the roof here, that's not a, just a straight roof. It's rather complicated one has these design lines on the inside so i really wonder that they took this effort to do that pretty interesting and then towards the rear the tail lamps are already beginning right there to a more dramatic rear and there we are and indeed this is like a middle spoiler so to speak you can really serve food here and I would be okay with that, you know, there's a rule with me in my cars or in my test vehicles, no food on the inside, but on the exterior, yeah, why not, <laughs> you can wash it off. But really dramatic spoiler right here, then the tail lamp signature here, so this is a very, very joyful design. Once again, the only thing they did not do, no fake exhaust tips, so there's no job for the Autogefühl fake exhaust police today. I think that's also a good decision. So again, the black, red, black contrast. Yeah, you can definitely split opinions with this car, but it's definitely unique. 
And by the way, you've already seen it's a five-door version, only five-door for the normal Yaris. The only exception is three-door for the GR Yaris. That's the sports, the racing version. And this will also feature a different platform. So this will, so to speak, then have the front of this one, but the rear from a different platform and then also offer all-wheel drive and, of course, even more horsepower. So very interesting that they also, once again, bring this racing version here with this new generation, even though it's a mixed chassis form then. But here, using this all-new architecture, they have their TNGA to give you, you know, even more advantages, stiffness and so on, and also the usage of space on the interior. Soon more to that. The crucial engine for this car will be this one, the inbuilt hybrid 1.5 liter naturally aspirated engine, made it to an electric motor, 116 horsepower, 9.7 seconds is the acceleration figure. Now featuring a lithium ion battery instead of the older one, lighter, more performance. Let's see about that. Then there's a normal naturally aspirated engine, 1.5 liter, 125 horsepower, 9 seconds or 10.2 seconds in the acceleration figure depending on if you pick the CVT or not and a small 1 liter engine 71 horsepower 14.6 seconds well and they're all three cylinders you can also see it right here one two three three cylinder naturally aspirated engine unlike in the GR Yaris which will feature a 1.6 liter turbo but all three cylinders and then 261 horsepower all-wheel drive and 5.5 seconds this will also be quite fun. But today, about the version that most people will probably buy, the hybrid this is also one of their unique features, definitely, for better fuel economy. Let's see how this new hybrid is mastering our test here today. This is the car key, which is nothing fancy, but also not too bad. Then let's check out the door closing sound. That's quite okay, just that here from the handles, maybe that should have been dampened, but the door closing sound itself is not too bad, actually. Quite nice. Then on the inside, this is hard pack. Then here, this is like a very shallow fabric surface. So it's also somewhat hard pack, but then a very, very slim fabric insert but it looks quite cool with this bright gray then also here look at how they play around with the design here, even in the door handles uh, really remarkable slim door pockets and then this is the all-new cockpit with a sporty steering wheel commands here left side for the small digital instrument in the middle part right side for the cruise control in this version here the left and the right gauge are digital as well and also all new seats they paid more attention to ergonomics they look quite sporty actually and then either they are available in all fabric or like this in the mix inside fabric and then outside they actually told me specifically asked for that that they use some animal material like here for example and then the other for example like here this is then leather red and when you feel it it's soft but here it feels the very same as in the top part so i don't see i don't see any difference i can't feel any difference that proves again the point it's not really necessary hmm not sure why they picked a mix here but it looks quite nice also here with the red contour stitches and let's see if it's really more comfortable than before and for me one meter is 86 or six with one the small car segment is not ideal usually <laughs> and then still some headroom left it's actually no problem so even for tall people it works and i have to say the seat form is surprisingly good 
soon of course driving the car and see more about that but so far it doesn't feel that small seating wise and i think that's definitely a step forward so if i compare it to the previous generation definitely a more comfortable seating position so that works then the steering wheel can be put in and out and also with a very smooth process and maybe you can see it also from camera um, maybe if jones takes like two steps back then you get better perspective you see what they've done here they moved actually the front cabin here the steering wheel and so on a little bit more back inside the vehicle so you have more distance to the hood this puts you more centralized into the vehicle also optimizes the weight balance and is supposed to give you a sportier driving feeling hmm. yeah also and you know again another interesting aspect here what they changed chassis wise positioning wise and we're really excited to see how it plays an effect while driving interior overview soft touch here hard pack in the lower part but it's also supposed to be a budget vehicle then the new 8 inch screen it starts just with the plain radio by the way in the lowest trim beginning mid trim you get in the 8 inch screen and then also with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto integration and also with the GPS zoom or details to the screen right here. Left side then with a small TFT in the inside, either analog or also the digital ones on the outside. Soon also more details to that. You've seen the steering wheel that looks actually quite fancy. So the cockpit layout is again a little bit joyful here also with some more couple of holes that are open. You still have a manual AC unit and also gives you, you know good feedback also when, when you control it while driving for example seat heating can be easily activated right here the steam we heated from basically in front of your left knee that's a little bit more complicated than other than that in the lower middle console we have place for your smartphone usb a supply but also inductive inductive charging is possible in lower part 12 volt power supply then the automatic gearbox here for the hybrid and um, you can have a D mode, normal driving mode, but also a B mode. Yes, beep, beep, beep. Yes, uh, okay, the ignition is on. <laughs> so this car gives a lot of beeping sounds. So either D or B mode for more recuperation. Then you ha can also switch driving modes here. Uh, soon more when we drive the car. And also the EV mode then, yeah, it tries to predominantly go to the EV mode. But in the Toyotas, it doesn't really make so much sense because you are in the EV mode anyway when you leave the throttle and um, you know yeah I think it's not really that relevant so and then there's this armrest here and it's split because there's an opening to this armrest with some more space underneath and then you can also put the whole thing up and then have more access to the cup holders but they are actually just non-adaptive so finally also in Europe the Toyotas get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and the sound system here optional jbl sound system with a really decent sound for such a small vehicle you can also see the additional speakers here left and right in the front cockpit so this is actually quite decent the integration is also well done and when you go back to the toyota menu yeah you probably don't want to do that um <laughs> uh yeah i mean there's like a day mode and uh um, you know day mode and night mode so both are actually available you can also adjust the contrast or, or, or the brightness here for example when we wouldn't put it a little bit brighter here then there's also changes here for the camera possible i can also show that to you yeah yeah let me first put on the car for real then there's also no beeping sound anymore this is the rear view camera um, does not have adjusting helping lines but the resolution is not the best but still quite okay other than that this system here when you look at the map this is still yeah somewhat basic so probably i would end up using the integrated carplay or android maps the whole system here as it looks like still very very old school this is here the view where you can see what is happening with engine the electric motor and the battery hmm. But still, from visualization, already quite old school. For me, the most important thing is now the proper smartphone integration. Volume control, that's still cool to have it right here. You can also adjust it the steering wheel. There's also a tune button right here. Does it also work for the map? No. 
I think the outside gauges look quite fancy in this digital version here. Speed and then left side for the EV system and for the gear you have selected. And on the inside then this looks then a little bit outdated. For example you can have the uh, consumption figures in there but also for example assistance systems information. Wait. Yeah, wait for what? I don't know. Here for example what music you're playing but again this looks quite outdated for a a new car but basically it does the job so yeah I would rather just use the left and the right gauge and that's it and the interesting new option is the head-up display with the current speed the loud speed and also some GPS arrows and yeah I mean it could be a little bit crisper from what I see but then sometimes also it depends on your height and the viewing angle but definitely a good option that you can keep your eyes on the road by the way here there's also hard pack here, the sunshade, and there's no card holder integrated right here. But whereas other vehicles had coast cuttings at the inside handles, they use here the inside handles. There are actually four inside handles still, that's good. And they're also dampened, you can see here. Time code markings, Thomas in the rear seat incoming. <laughs> here, inside of the door. Very slim fabric insert once again. And you see the door doesn't open too wide and it's a small, it's a short vehicle. Therefore, when you look on the inside, you have the same sporty design here, seating wise in the rear. But you already see that although the wheelbase has been increased and you have a little bit more legroom than before. Yeah, is it really sufficient for me? I guess not. I mean, the seat is soft on the back part, so I do fit in here, but barely. But again, it's a very short vehicle. Headroom-wise, exactly fit. Just when I put my spine up, then I do hit the ceiling with my head. But I mean, you have to have a compromise at some point, you know, for a short vehicle. However, it's better than in the previous generation. You can get along and the seating position is also not too uncomfortable for this size of a vehicle. Isofix here at the outside part. You can already fold the seats from here. Either this way or this way, so it's one third, two third split. This middle part here is fixed, although you can theoretically sit in the middle part. The middle tunnel is not too big. Of course, a front wheel driven only car, and yeah, sitting here in the middle part is not recommended for a tall adult. But no wonder, mate. Let's check out the trunk area and you can see this design on the exterior of course makes you lose the trunk height here a little but still you know I think it's quite okay you can see the area here below this you still have some more space left because they want to have a rather even loading still I think it's a good decision because it's easier to load things in and out and then if you like you can also you know take it all out this is possible or just fold it up to store something underneath I think a good solution right here so if we put sample luggage in you can see this way it does fit what about the vertical way this is more critical yeah this can be a problem indeed hmm so with the rolls there yeah with the wheels hmm yeah this is indeed a problem so this will not really fit I have to store it differently Again, we're in a very, very small segment, so you have to have some compromises. The length here for you is about 63 centimeters. The width is a little bit less than a meter right here. And the height to the cover is a little bit less than 40 centimeters. I already folded one seat right there, the left part. And this is then one meters the one when you're 35 second half I could do it right here oh there has been a leaf on the inside of the trunk interesting now it's falling apart sorry about that live and autogefühl and that's the maximum setup welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the new Toyota Yaris and we start here in this parking lot and we pick that on you know on detention hour of course because it's so super hot outside and the light is so bright you couldn't see the car but in the shadow it's 
not that hot and also you can see the lines of the car even better and also this fits to this you know to the vehicle this urban surrounding and also here i want to start off here with some narrow driving because this also shows you the capability of the vehicle and yeah we don't need the um, gps here stop guidance don't need it right here so and i also want to show you this system here you know that you can see what is being done by the vehicle so here at the moment in the ev mode when we're going downhill here we also can use some recuperation either that is done by using the brakes and then you can see also the left charging gauge but i could also put it in the b mode then automatically mehr mehr that's german more recuperation is being done <laughs> yeah, mehr is more in German. So sometimes I tend to talk German just a little bit. But sometimes also, you know, when talking to my family or something, I tend to talk English because I'm talking English in business context all the time. So yeah, that's what ha what's happening. So you feel really at ease with this vehicle here. I'll just use the force, then everything opens. That's, you know. Sorry, sometimes the force is delayed. <laughs> So, once again, um, this is one of the things here when using a smaller vehicle, you're so relaxed in these narrow situations. I think that's really, you know, something that's definitely relieving. Usually I leave it in a D mode. The B, the recuperation mode, is not too harsh. So it has never like one pedal feel like, like with the plug-in hybrid or with the all-electric vehicle or so. This is more about the mix. It's not about the electric driving only situations also not about an electric range this is really then more about you know how can you just optimize the fuel economy from here and there this new feeling here in the new generation is definitely more grown up so the car doesn't feel as tiny as it looks like so this seating position here which is more suitable to taller drivers which is more comfortable then again, you need to sit a little bit more back in the vehicle. The new, I really like new damper settings. So um, indeed, it's not too stiff. Yet again, it's also not super wobbly or so. So I think they found a good setup. This was a lane departure warning. Then there's a blind spot monitor right here. When I turn the turning indicators, it's also flashing. This is an option, the blind spot monitor. However, most of the other assistance systems like the adaptive cruise control here, you can set here with the right thumb on the steering wheel, adaptive cruise control, autonomous emergency brake. This is all standard with this vehicle and that's of course really, really good. Here at about 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour, also decent as for the noise insulation. The tarmac here is quite rough, still we are not hearing too much. Here then, you know, in this situation, you feel that the suspension is shaking up a little bit because it's not set on the stiffest tone. I think it's definitely the right decision. However, you have a natural steering input here. And then when you're going some slalom at higher speeds, then you feel that this is not meant to be a sporty vehicle, but that's actually totally fine. Yet, it still gives you a more natural feeling, I would say. So definitely, if you compare to the previous generation, this feels more comfortable, sportier, and also more natural from the input here. There's no dead zone angle here at the steering wheel. Everything feels really in connection, you know, with the road, car, and the driver. So, you know, I really, really like that, what they've, what they've done here. The only thing is, again, you cannot expect some sporty driving fun from this base version as for the suspension at higher speeds. That's, again, then, when I do it like this, um, you feel that you're not that crisp. No. However, it's still a small car, and that always is somewhat fun to drive, especially when you're going left, right, left, right again. But to me, also one of the most crucial things is that you have a better noise insulation right here now. So otherwise, in the older generation, it would have been way louder here at this very moment. You feel that the chassis is stiffer, so um, the car is not flexing that much. Just again, as I said, at higher speeds from suspension a little bit. But if they would have, would have put it stiffer, they would definitely would have re reduced the comfort in you know everyday driving life situations. Head-up display could be a little bit crisper from the um, resolution, I think. So yeah, it might depend on the viewing angle, but for me it's not ideal. But still, it's quite okay. 
So here again, the cruise control, you can set it with the steering wheel. Let's also see how it handles right there. Lane keeping assist is also active. You can see here the car steers together with me and so far also in a quite smooth process. From time to time this car gives beeping sounds. You already realize it while watching our review. This can be a little bit annoying because sometimes you don't know what this is beeping sound for. And if it, ah, wait a minute, that was for this and that. Yeah, okay. Here again, at the moment, the combustion engine is on. That's of course always then at higher speeds and also more useful. For example, we cruise control here, 100 kilometers an hour, 16 miles an hour. Then it's really more useful that it's been done with, a, yeah, that's again beeping sounds here. So that is when I exceed the speed I've set earlier. Yeah. Now to about 120 kilometers an hour and still I think quite decent as for the noise insulation. Can set the speed again once more here. I have also a quite decent overview, although the design is of course screaming out, but still you have a good feeling of what's happening around you. Nothing is really blocking your view. That's again also something you know quite good. So Driving wise, I think it's probably the best step forward here for the new Yaris in this generation. Just said the only thing you cannot expect is that you have a sporty suspension. There's also no adaptive suspension available where you can, for example, set from a different tone. They don't have that. Hardly any manufacturers offer that in this segment. It's usually more something of a compact segment. So it's also no wonder. Otherwise, the car would also get just too expensive. So far, I think um, really does a very, very good job. So proves our points from earlier. Let's see, high speed, high speed, you know, for this car, this is high speed and lane change here. Yeah, you probably see it on camera, you know, that it's shaking there a little bit. But so many times we have cars that set on a very, very stiff suspension and that's definitely worse than what we have here so I think it makes more sense to go for soft suspension with these small vehicles. Fuel economy so far when you have you know a cruise control like this the hybrid system won't play such a role but still from time to time I leave the throttle accelerate again and then again the battery also can help us once more to get to speed or can buffer some energy again and so we at the moment below five liters on one kilometers and that's very well some 50 mpg us and very good 50s mpg uk so a little bit less than 60 mpg uk and we know that from the toyota vehicles here of course especially it's the smallest ones and you can also score it better if you like depending on also how good you're using this hybrid system if you have more city traffic where you, for example, can um, you know, make even more use of that one. So here, for example, and when I plan to get off the motorway, I get in behind the vehicle, I'm on the brakes, and again, battery is being gained back. Here also, again, in the EV mode, electric only. And when I slightly just press the throttle again, I'm staying in the EV mode, I can do that. Only when I need a little bit more power, then again, the engine jumps on and I'm again back where I was before. And I think this system is actually quite helpful and most people will probably also go then for a nice despect hybrid. It's a different kind of driving feeling and you can enjoy these electric moments even more so definitely off the motorway. We have different driving modes as well, like a power driving mode for acceleration. Let's go. Plop. That was like 35 kilometers an hour to 90 kilometers an hour. Still quite decent and it also didn't feel uh, too weird as for the automatic gearbox. So that was rather a very smooth process and you also heard that the engine didn't scream up too much, so there were earlier hybrid models and also their normal natural aspirated engine, which felt kind of awkward when accelerating. And here, I think they found a more suitable solution for that. 
And once again, this was this power mode that gives me a little bit more boost. You can also pick the eco driving mode that is reducing the throttle input. So exactly doing the opposite thing of the power mode. And most of the time, I think I mean, it doesn't make too much difference. So you would just keep it in the normal driving mode and you're just fine because the car is also automatically working that out for you. And I found it always interesting to see then you know this this play between the hybrid modes between you have the pure EV mode and again when the combustion engine goes on so this indeed gives you a very unique driving experience and would also be another reason to go for that um, the entry-level engine is also less expensive yes then you have to think about how much power do you need this is not a super powerful super fast car here even in the hybrid so I'm not sure if I would like the vehicle with even less power. Mm, yeah, it might work, definitely, but of course here you still have some acceleration reserve left if you want to get on the motorway, for example. So that's definitely very good to have. You know, we drive a little bit slower. This is also a good speed then once more for, for fuel economy tests. And it's the fuel economy is actually just improving and improving. And it's hardly the case in, in other tests. And we have an acceleration here, and now we're getting closer to four liters or more kilometers. So that would be then easily 60 mpg plus figures. So that's really, once again, a very decent result. And you see that this hybrid technology is, of course, somewhat working. Once more, we're in the EV mode because here in situations where now it's going slightly downhill, I don't really need to accelerate now went to 50 kilometers an hour the speed limit once again on the brakes using more recuperation so you know that when you're reducing your speed when there are some topography changes not all of the energy is lost that's always a good good feeling to have in in, in the back of your mind you know so yeah now let's get into more rural traffic here a little bit slower once again a good steering feeling and yeah, you can easily feel at home in this vehicle. I can just once again stress that it's really way more silent than the previous generation. It feels more natural. They got a good new steering feeling. So I think it's really remarkable. Hardly, you know, hardly is that that often we see such a drastic change between the generations. So this really feels like a completely new vehicle. The only thing to me that has stayed the same is actually that it has this very joyful exterior styling but driving wise it really feels like a completely different vehicle and you can see from time to time they claim that you drive more in the ev mode than in the combustion engine on but not so sure about that but here we do have a lot of moments where we can use the ev drive only mode here again once again only ev driving at the moment and that's always the case when you don't need a strong acceleration when you're just rolling 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 ha huh? <laughs> then you can keep up this ev mode just when you need the next punch and that's of course really cool at the moment battery is half full so this new lithium ion battery always discussion on which one is the better technology for this very use case so far they argued that the you know the the older system was the more suitable for that no, obviously not anymore so it depends on we had um, with normal car batteries recently some problems when it was lithium ion, ion like the normal um, 12 volt car batteries used on McLaren and Porsches they tend to deplete quite fastly so it really depends on the use case um, but here it seems quite suitable even a little bit lighter here again steering wheel natural driving feeling out of the roundabout so as long as you're not at really high speeds and shake up the suspension, that's not feeling too good. Other than that, I think the suspension wheels feels very comfortable here now. So um, a great rework and for all city driving, for all non-high speed driving, the suspension setup here is really perfect. And especially when you are here you know, at the lower speeds, it is also decent fun to drive this car. And for a city car like it is, here that's I think also one of the most crucial factors and really depends on <laughs> we can get this fuel economy better and better and better and now we're even scratching the four liter on one kilometer mark so 
I think also fuel economy wise, well done, the hybrid system once again works well. And now to our conclusion for today with the all new Toyota Yaris. Although it hasn't changed in the size that much, we can really say on a metaphorical level the Yaris has grown up because well on the exterior it looks a little bit sportier than before but definitely still a very unique styling that will split in love or hate. What's your take on that? Then on the interior you have a little bit more space than before and you sit even better especially in the front seat here even for tall people. So considering this is a very tiny vehicle I think I had some decent comfort, so they really worked on the ergonomics. That's, I think, one of the most crucial things. Then, finally, also for the European vehicles, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration for the Toyotas. The Yaris has introduced that and will also be rolled out to the other new models and also to existing ones when they're being updated. Then the whole cockpit looks a little bit more modern than before. Yeah, the software of the infotainment system, besides the smartphone integration, yeah, can't really use that much of it. That's definitely not a strength of the vehicle. Driving-wise, once again, interesting with the hybrid technology where you can score some decent fuel economy. And also, this car definitely drives, indeed, more comfortable and sportier both than before, if you compare it to the previous generation. That's, I think, really cool. So the stiffening of the chassis, that you sit more towards the center of the vehicle, the center of gravity is lower, they worked on the dampening and so on. So I think this car really especially gained in the driving feeling, which feels a little bit more natural than before, and as I said, more comfortable and sportier than before. So overall, I think in all respects, really a good step forward here for this new generation of the Yaris. Depending on the price, of course, depends on the trim level here as it is now with the hybrid and also with a rather higher trim of course it won't be that cheap but you can also get some entry level models which then you know really come close to like by like 15,000 euros or something and I think that's of course a very decent offer so thank you so much for tuning in today what do you think about the new Yaris leave your comments about this vehicle and also tune in to our very next review thank you so much for tuning in